Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Join us back again in the desert-laden Mesopotamia campaign at a place called Nasiria, Iraq, under the command of George Gorringe to lead his 5,000-man 30th Brigade to attack a similar-sized force of Ottoman troops. Unfortunately, it was never learned who led the Turks during this battle. On the morning of June 27th, Major General George Gorringe was ordered by Sir Charles Townsend to capture Nasiria, a vital supply base if they're going to invade Baghdad itself. Gorringe led his Anglo-Indian force against the Turkish garrison during a heat wave of 100 15 degrees with the flooded delta. Not only was it horrifically hot, the flooding is a regular occurrence and made the place laden with mosquitoes. This required Gorringe to transport his artillery across in shallow boats that were easily targeted by the accurate Ottoman cannons. Gorringe and his men continued to use the canals as much as they could. As the men arrived at Nasiria on the first week of July, they found Turks had built a dam across the Hakika Channel to stop the British advance. British volunteers from the engineers conducted an operation to destroy the dam, allowing the British to push further up the Euphrates River. The operation itself to blow the dam came under heavy Turkish fire from machine guns. The British casualties started mounting, but with perseverance they were able to destroy the dam, allowing the British to keep moving upriver. The Turks also had bad luck with their mines they had used to defend the area. The British easily bypassed the mines with information given to them by a prisoner. Finally, British and Indian troops arrived at the strongest area of Turk defenses, consisting of a series of fortifications that the Turk had used to anchor on. The Turks had smartly set up that each flank of their defenses was a heavy marsh, making any movement through it problematic at best. This was true until July 13th when an additional British brigade was dispatched and helped Gorringe make another assault on the Turkish defenses. This time, however, they decided to attack through the marsh. Unfortunately for the British, it did not go as expected and they were pushed back in spite of the reinforcements. This resulted in a stalemate of fighting for 10 days. During this time, both sides began to suffer from heat stroke and disease and low morale was rampant. This changed on July 24th when new intelligence was uncovered by the British observation aircraft. Using this information, Gorringe ordered an attack and helped aid them, the British towed a barge up the middle of the river to try to use it to build a bridge. This was unsuccessful as most things were in this fight, but they were able to move the barge and use it as a partial dam to allow British and Indian troops to wade across. After enough Allied troops crossed, Gorringe called up the gunboat and they assaulted the Turks again. This time though it worked and the Turks broke under the onslaught, the retreating Turks headed for cut while the British troops captured the Turkish equipment supplies. Casualties were moderate, with the British losing more than 530 men, with 105 killed and at least 425 wounded. Meanwhile, the Turks lost four times that number at least, with at least 500 dead, 1,000 wounded, and another 1,000 missing or captured, for a total amount of at least 2,500 men that were lost. However, in our news of the day today, we're going to talk about an advertisement found in the Lexington Herald on July 27, 1915, about a sketchy, quote unquote, active liver pill. Per the ad, a fighting cock. I feel like a fighting cock is the expression of a man with an active liver. He tackles his work with vim. He is successful. Nine times out of ten, you'll find he takes touch pills which have been used by a million people with satisfactory results. At your druggist, sugar-coated, or plain. However, I should note, after doing a little research, I found the Henry Ford Museum of American Innovation did a chemical analysis in 2009 of some of Dr. Tut's liver pills. And here's what the possible chemical makeup they found of the various pills. Aconite, chamomile, bryon, china, belladonna, mercury, Nux vomica, which itself contains strychnine and brucine, pulsatilla, sulfur, lachesis, chelidonium, and potophyll. It should be noted that almost all those ingredients are poisonous or toxic to humans in one way or another. Although it does go to show you it isn't just modern day snake oil salesmen, but the US itself has a long history of quacks that will poison you for some money. I'm only half joking when I say don't tell Dr. Oz or Jim Baker about these supposed cures. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War. Above, above.